Hello and welcome to Tipcast once again with myself, Shane Stapleton, joined as ever by Nina Guardian Sports Editor, uh, Shane Brophy. Shane, how are things with you? Jeez, the weather has turned, hasn't it? Oh, jeez, I'm just looking outside at it here now and I'm saying, Jesus, uh, you could do, I could be doing something better for the next hour, but sure, look, we'll, we'll talk some waffle about hurling and football and camogie and sure, we'll, we'll, we'll get that part done anyway, so... Well, to be fair, like it's actually been a largely positive few days for Tipperary GA. Yeah. Now, I know the Camogie team won't be, well, neither the senior nor the minor Camogie team will necessarily yeah. agree with that after narrow defeats there. Bitter pills to swallow. But I suppose we're just focused on the men's team and men's teams initially. Yeah. Tipperary beating uh, Antrim 7.29 to 1.17. Okay, fine. The game isn't all that meaningful um, because there was nothing at stake. But that's a great boost. And then the footballers making it four wins in a row when maybe a month ago we were thinking, you know, where's this team going in Division 4? Like, it has been a great weekend for the men's teams. Oh, it has, yeah. Look, it's it's, it's like a, we've... Unfortunately, that sort of... Um, I think it was 15, 20 years ago when the, we were watching English football and it, it, this panic reaction every time a couple of bad results went through and uh, went uh, against you and the sky started to fall in. And these guys, all it takes is one result for a bit of positivity to come back. Like, and I... I, I um. I suppose it's starting with the hurlers. I think look, you can't get too carried away with a win, big win over Antrim, but you can always take a small couple of nuggets from a game like that. Where okay, Antrim rested a few guys, um, their intensity levels probably weren't up to the levels you would have hoped for an opposition. But look, they have bigger fish to fry with Offaly next weekend. It's hard to hard to blame them. But look, I I would still think um, I don't know if you would agree that you can always take a couple of positive things. I thought. Puck outs were better. I thought our intent in terms of getting the ball into our forward line was better. A bit more understanding between the backs and the forwards. And I would have thought last Sunday we were probably about 12 to 13 of this team injury permitting that will start in Walsh Park and in the first round of the championship. Oh, I, I think there were a lot of positives there. And like what you're saying, in terms of like you put up seven, like basically win a game by 30 points, but mm. can you still take something from it? I would say, yeah, you, you'd be thinking Tip scored one goal in four games before this, and that came from a mistake from Kilkenny goalkeeper Owen Murphy, you know, rare enough from him, that he'd hit a ball out to Dennis Maher and he'd feed Jake Morris for a goal. But Tip weren't really creating chances in the sense mm -hmm. of through their own work. Sometimes they'd turn over the opposition, they'd have a chance like Jake Morris had one um, the last day out against Watford. Remember, he, ju he just put it low past the far post. But in this game, it was goal chance after goal chance, and whose fingerprints were on pretty much all of it, only Mark Kyo. So, and, we, you know, and we, we said it on the show a couple of weeks ago. Sure, he had a couple saying. of times, a couple of times against Waterford, he didn't take on his man. He was settled for the easy point. He didn't do it this time. Did you get the sense that the team went out there with instruction, lads? We're going to have to start taking our man on here because, like, there, there's no point in always leaning back and hitting the point mm. over the shoulder. A lovely little pretty point. A lot of the times they don't go over anyway, but you can't win championships, etc., without scoring goals. Oh, I think there's there definitely from an intent right from the word go. And, um, well, we for sure, the first ball that went in, Mark Yo took on his man. And like they, there was even a few maybe half chances that maybe they were left behind, maybe where the point really should have been taken. Like they're, they're probably fight, tried to force the goal too much. But I think the, the a pure example of that is John McGrath. You were thinking, like John McGrath, he, he had a few chances earlier on to maybe take an easy score just to work himself into the game. But no, he tried to work on the pass. Um, he, he stuck to the game plan, which I thought was just pure John McGrath. Like, he wasn't going to put himself in front of the, the game plan, even though he desperately needed a bit of uh, confidence. And you could see it in a few of his early possessions that he came in. Like, he, he was jittery, a bit uncertain about himself. But once he got the first point and then the goal after that, he was away. And, like, it just... All it takes is a small thing, and I, I, I think John McGrath will be feeling an awful lot good about himself in training this week. It's just a pity for the, maybe him that we don't have another game coming this weekend. But I know Colm has, um, they are playing a challenge match this Sunday. I'm not sure who it is against. I presume it'll be either Dublin or Galway by the process of elimination. So, um, but like that challenge match would be ideal for John. Just get get him another game if he plays well there again. You'd have to think a confident John McGrath has to start against Waterford. Yeah, like you and I rate him very highly. We've yeah. always spoken highly of him. But if anyone else had been playing the way he has for Tipperary the past couple of years, they probably wouldn't be getting yeah. 
continuing to be getting chances, but it's right to stick with him. I, I think last year against Clare, that game where, you know, Aidan McCarthy gave away the penalty, if you want yeah. to call it that, even though it was more or less out on the Ennis Road. Um, and, and that was a tough day for him. Yeah. But, geez, like, this is an example where hopefully the club form can be brought in with the county and, you know, it hasn't happened for him straight away. But maybe that I, second I think, half where he got two, three, all of a sudden confidence is gone. Yeah, and I think... Um, I think giving him a floating role, maybe maybe if him and Noel were actually close to get to each other, maybe around the, that centre forward area, like I think that could play to Tip's hands and maybe maybe leave Kyo and um, maybe Jake Morris is maybe the two inside, or maybe Jake Morris maybe drifting in there too. Like uh, you got to, there's exciting possibilities there if they get the right type of ball because I don't care what defenders are out there in the best defenders in the country. If if tip forwards get good quality ball and are F one on one or in a chance of t- getting a goal, geez, I, I you'd back a tip forward any every day of the week. Yeah, I, I'd be I I think that's probably unlikely to have the two of them out around the centre forward position. Yeah. Maybe I mean the last time John McGrath really took over an inter county mm. match, probably the All Ireland final in twenty nineteen mm. when he was out there. But I, I'm not. I'd say they want an awful lot of pace and players now who are able to burst up through the centre. I noticed mm. Michael Breen was solo and forward a nice bit more than we've seen. Sometimes mm. off to the side, like Jake Morris does have that unbelievable pace. If Tipper are going to create and score goals, they're going to have to be able to test teams out the field so that they have to be drawn out. Mm. You know that they have to mark their men. But then also that you know the stick passes up the field. I thought um, Robert Byrne did a couple of nice ones into the inside forward yeah. line. And Jason Ford did look dangerous in there. You know, I mean, sometimes he gets accused of being brilliant in the league and then not always in the championship. But if he can keep that form going there, and he is a he has a vicious puck of a ball from close range. Like if he oh, gets a, if he if he gets a goal chance fourteen yards out, there's so much power in his shots. Like there, there's a fair chance of him go, <laughs> going past the goalie before he set. Like so, yeah. But it's, it's funny. Like we sound all positive about Tip after two yeah. defeats in the games beforehand, but it's. It's little markers, little things that you see that mm. make you, you a bit more positive about it. By the way, the top scorers from play just after five rounds of the league, Rory O'Connor is out on, on his own with 316. Now, you know, this is ignoring freeze. So 316 works out at 25 points. Next in line, then, Shane Kingston of Cork has four or five. But also, there's two more Tipperary uh, players who have scored the same amount as well. Jason Ford with 114 play from play and Mark Kyo with 211 from play. Mm. And now, all of a sudden, do, do you feel like this is Mark Kyo's time? Like, Seamus Callanan has confirmed he's not going to be there for the Watford or Clare games. Mm. I think, like, the colours, we have to just say to Mark Kyo, you are number 14 or one of the two inside, and we're sticking with you. Because even with UCC in the past couple of years as well, he, he's got goal written all over it. Yeah, and I I, I think it's it's sort of, um, it's 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 like where Seamus Callanan was at at 2014 when Eamon O'Shea more or less put the arm around the shoulder and said, you're my full forward, you're my free taker, you're my guy really. And I'd love to see Colin Bonner will have gone to Mark Kyo this week and said, injury permitting, you're my number 14 in Watford. I, just to get him in the zone and just see, like, there's there's a there's a swagger about Mark Kyo I like. There's a bit of cockiness about him. Um, look, sometimes that can count against you, but it's a good cockiness. Like, he he knows he's good. He loves taking on his men. He, he, look, we've seen, was it two or three years ago, he got a goal for UCC um, where he got the ball in the wing yeah. and he came through and he flicked it up over defender and he's stuck in. Like, that, that's, that's not just quality. There's a bit of... There's a little bit of good arrogance in that. I like that about him. Like so, um, like yeah. So like a player like that. Like all Tip need is one or two of the young guys. Like, that's all we're looking for. One or two of the younger guys to come in and say to just to rejuvenate. But it's like there's still an awful lot of quality there. Like I, I would have thought looking at the team, we won't be short on scoring in the championship. It's can we. Uh, can we? It's, it'll be up to our defense, and can we keep them out at the other end? Like, uh, like you look last year in the big games against Limerick, conceded two twenty nine, conceded four twenty eight, conceded one twenty eight against Waterford a few weeks ago. They're they're just too like that's that's putting too much pressure on the forwards to score at the other end. So, like I I'd like to think maybe over the next four weeks it'll be all about getting the um getting the defense right, getting them to the right pitch of intensity and and physicality to to. I suppose withstand what other other teams are we bringing against us. 
Yeah, it's a good point. Boom Boom 43 says, Kyo generates serious power for his goal attempts. Keep the comments coming in. Let us know who you've been impressed by, who you'd like to see being given that chance for championship. Yeah, you, you make a fair point with the amount being conceded. Sometimes, though, the root of the problem is not, not enough pressure being put on outfield because yeah. a few times you look at the tip backs in the last couple of years and they're left alone and they're left one-on-one -on -one and not much support coming mm. and the ball coming in is coming in too lovely and, and yeah. that's not a sustainable approach. But just tip scoring, though, though, throughout the league, I mean, this was 7.29 in one game is unbelievable. Yeah. Before that, 21 points, 119, 21 points, 21 points. Like, tip do have to become more consistent in terms of putting up decent scores. And that, that comes through a bit of variety yeah. through the play. What, what did you make of seeing the likes of Seamus Kennedy continuing upfield and then Kyo gave him a lovely ball over the top and he buried one from just the edge of the penalty area? Um, Rona Maher again scoring from distance mm. in this game. So maybe maybe there's a few more players that are now going to be able to contribute scores as well. Yeah, no, I know. I, I, I liked the, the, the Kennedy goal just because he took it upon himself. Okay, his, his direct marker, the Antrim um, wing forward, had gone missing, but... Seamus, I suppose it wasn't Seamus' mentality was okay. I'll just stay at home and mind my own patch, and maybe let let the forwards do their bit. He he saw the possibility there. Okay, I, I'm in a bit of space here. The ball's going up to the corner. There's nobody in front of me. If if I make the run and Mark sees me, we have a two on one here. And look, it ended up the back end. I just love that bit of proact proactivity there. Um, so, um. Like that, that, that would that, that definitely was. I, I, I like that, and I'd like to think we'll probably see a bit more of that going forward. Yeah, and um, and the comment there from Boom Boom 43 again, strange win by 30 points with no score from midfield. Yeah, that that is uh, definitely a point to be made. Well, well Connor, Connor Stanklin did score a couple, yeah, came in, but he, it, it was hard to tell whether he was midfield or. Oh, yeah, no, I think he was. I think he was midfield, and I suppose he did get two, but I think he shot three wides, he was a bit eager too, and it wasn't for the one to try in for the middle of the field. Um, yeah, Barry Heffernan Heffernan. Missed a lot of chances he, he too, did, he? yeah, but he was busy, like so. Um, I have no, um, I have no issue there. Like, I, I, I actually think it's, it's. Like, you see other teams, and there's so many scores coming from far out, and like, I suppose maybe if there was one criticism from maybe Tip, we were maybe shooting too much from the half back line, maybe in recent years. For now, look, at, if we get the six forwards to do what they should be doing most of the time and getting up the majority of the scores, that's what we need them to do. I think. I do think maybe if Tipper to be all contenders this year and successful, our our two midfielders will nearly need to be more defensive orientated and forward orientated. If you know what I mean. Well, they they need to be able to carry the ball through the middle yeah. as well. So I can understand the thought process behind yeah. uh, putting Barry Heffernan in there. I can understand having Dan McCormick in there because you need someone who's yeah. kind of got that defensive know how of of being a screen there. Um, I I thought Jer Brown might get a bit of game time. He'd obviously missed the last day out. Would like to have seen him. Would like to have seen maybe Garoto O'Connor get a game because again, this is a young player who's done well in the Fitzgibbon Cup with UL. Mm. You know, why not give him his bow as well and just see, you know, what can he bring to the table? I was I was a little disappointed that he wasn't playing. Yeah, no, I suppose I think it's Garoto O'Connor and I think John Maher. I think we're the only two of the official panel that didn't see a minute in the league. So um look, I suppose. I suppose Garod is probably still trying to find his way, unlike maybe Mark Kyo, who's been in there for a few years. Of course, it's Garod's first official year on the panel. He's had a busy year with UL, so I suppose maybe that hindered him a small bit in terms of being fresh and, and for the weekend. So, look, it's, I would think maybe, I think O'Connor might have a, a part to play maybe off the bench in the summer. Like, I suppose it would be, would be a risk maybe throwing a guy in with no no even league experience in the championship but um look i think look, in fairness to, to colin bonner he's been consistent from day one that he, the league for him was about looking at players and look he's looked at 31 he's i think him tipperary and galway nearly were the same in terms of um how they took the league i suppose henry shefflin the same as colin bonner he had to go in and see who he had and um first before he could maybe try to put a you put that to, to the expense of trying to get a settled team, but I suppose I would have think I, as I said earlier, I would have thought after last weekend, you're probably looking at maybe 12 13 of the team injury permitting that will play in Waterford. I think Jake Morris will come back in fit and firing, and after that, um, I'm not sure. I I think it's probably a toss of a coin between John McGrath and Connor Bow maybe to start as well in the summer. and. 
I'm not sure. I think Seamus Kennedy will be one wing back. I'm not sure about whether Robert Byrne has done enough to be your number five on the other wing, but um, he's done nothing wrong. I think Byrne and Quigley, I think, are in the same boat. They haven't done an awful lot wrong, but you have you had you they haven't really had that maybe stardust moment in the league to say they've arrived either. So um, they're I think Byrne and maybe um, who maybe between Connor Bow and John McGrath would be maybe the only two at this stage I would think would be the questionable maybe um, decisions that you would make for uh, the first round of the championship. Yeah, I mean, you, you've talked about James Quigley mm-hmm. for a long time yeah. in the sense of being maybe the best fullback at club yeah. level and tip for a good while. He hasn't really put a foot wrong throughout yeah. this. So I, I can, if, if you look at the full back line that started the other day, Kyle Barris, James Quigley and Craig Morgan, I, I'd imagine all of them will start the first round of the mm-hmm. championship, injury permitting. Yeah, then the half back line. I think there's an embarrassment of riches or certainly of options mm-hmm. when it comes to half back line. Robert Byrne, Ronan Maher, James Kendy, Owen Connolly, when he was tried, he was tried in corner back when yeah. Brian McGrath was tried. So like they were probably tried out of position. Paddy Cadell was tried midfield. To me, that would be out of position. But maybe those lads are going to lose out by virtue of that. You know, it's hard enough to make their place without mm. you know being thrown in at the deep end in yeah. a position you're not suited. I like to. the like, yeah, Harry the, 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 the wing back. So I think there's an element of square pegs and round holes with some of this. Yeah. Yeah, there seem to be I'd say it looks like they're going to hit on Heffernan for the middle of the field. I would have thought maybe if Willie Connors was still there you could have maybe afford to put Barry back at wing back and have Willie in the middle of the field. Was Willie such a good link man? Like he's a very good user of the ball, but unfortunately he's not there. Um, like Alan Flynn, sort of a player that the league has sort of just passed him by. Maybe like Alan Flynn's best position pound for pound is in the half back line, but he's playing a lot more of his hurling for tip in the middle of the field. Look, if he is a good strong three weeks, you think if there's a if it, if there's a decision in maybe the make up your half back line midfield. Especially going to Watford, you're thinking, um, will experience maybe trump in experience if there's a tight call maybe between Robert Byrne or an Alan Flynn or just I, I that that sort of thinking because like that's such a difficult first round game. Like it's um you really want to have the guys you're really sure about going there, the guys that are um you know that when it's just going to be such a bear pit of a game. Like you really want your your toughest, your mentally toughest guys, and also physically toughest, but your mentally toughest guys down there that day. Yeah, it's so key to pick lads in positions where they're naturally yeah. suited to that. So like Rona, having Rona Matter at six rather than seven, I think is going to work out well. That if he drives out through the center, he can take a score. You don't. Yeah. I mean, you don't want him taking eight shots in a game, but like he can score, and he like you can see that from a number of the players. They were looking for that nice inside stick mm. pass into Kyo and you know Jason uh, Ford and John McGrath, and I think on another day Tip could have scored even more, which is ridiculous when you score seven twenty nine. Yeah, uh, and Seamus Kendy, you know he was playing that number six role, kind of the sweeper before Ronan Maher came back, and I think number seven suits him better. It's naturally more of what he'd do. I think he's happy to take the ball, carry it out the field, do a one two. You know, yeah, like, like he has he has that know, football in background. Too. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I mean, that naturally plays towards doing that, which is, I suppose, part of the reason I was so uh, talking about Cadell so often. But I think Byrne, his use of the ball was pretty good. Yeah. I mean, I haven't had an opportunity to watch the game back, but I thought the way he supplied the inside line with ball at times, I thought that was quite good. And he's very he's very um, abrasive also, mm. which as long as he keeps a top on it, that's yeah. a huge advantage of having. And then Connor Bow, I mean, I'm naming players that all have energy too, which is mm. something that caught up with Tipperary last year. Oh, definitely. I know. I, I, I would. Um, like sometimes, like you, you, it was the maybe. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm mumbling there a bit. But just over the last ten years, the amount of times like Tip would have got to league semi-finals, the league finals, and they lost, and you're going into the championship in a downer, and um, like sometimes maybe finishing up the league, maybe not getting to a semi-final, and maybe a small bit like okay the one easily last weekend but like you're you're sort of going in with a small bit more momentum like you would have maybe if tip did get to a semi-final and, and or final and it didn't work out automatically you're going into the first round of the championship on a downer so i like just think it probably does tip no harm to be finished in the league now um i would have thought the ideal scenario for tip uh from the league from the remainder of it is Watford get to the final because just just um because they'd only have two weeks to recover then before the championship, whether they win or lose, just it, it's 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 a bit more of an exertion. Like I, we we'll probably have a chat about the two league semi-finals this weekend. I, I think we're going to get two really, really good semi-finals. But I actually think we could have, a, 
we could actually get to a league final where you could have maybe won or by both of the teams experimenting. You know, they, they might, you know, the way they, especially Cork and um, Cork and Waterford, like if they get to a league final and they have such tough matches in the first round of the championship a fortnight later, are like, will they be, um, especially Cork, like I think Cork are in a, Cork are in a difficult spot. Like, I don't know if they need a league final two weeks before that's where Limerick. Yeah, actually, it's a really good point because Kilkenny's first two matches in the championship this year are Leash and Westmead. Hmm. So, actually, for them, if they want to ensure that they don't go a little, somewhat stale in terms of like yeah. playing the top end teams, you know, without being dismissive of the of the other sides, there, hmm. it, it actually would be an advantage to get to a final so that they'll be playing a top team again. Wexford, for, their first game is at home to Galway, so. I mean, it's strange to be talking about league semi-finals yeah. this way in terms of like who would be happy to lose a semi-final. Yeah. But you know, when you're out there, you do want to win the games. But I, I definitely take your point on that. Um, and like, if you if you if I was to call the semis now, I would think Cork and Waterford will win. <laughs> that would be that would be just an interesting scenario. Like, if the two of the mid league and league final would would both of them maybe maybe hold a few players back. I like it just and I'm not I'm not right now Wexford and Kilkenny this weekend. I just think Do you Cork, think Liam Cattle would be happy to 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 not win a league final? Do you not think he'd go all out and say I think you know he, he probably would. Like, I think he'd, be, he'd probably be confident enough think I I've enough good guys to be Tipperary. Like he he probably has enough of a knowledge of the Tipperary game plan to say oh, look two weeks is enough. Like um and like he did he did hold a few guys back against Kilkenny. Like, I suppose the one thing with Cahill is I don't think he's put his best 15 out team out in the field this year. I know Caleb Lyons and Jeremy Barron have been injured, and I don't think they're expected back this weekend either. I think he'd probably go strong against Wexford this weekend as he, what he perceives to be his best 15. After that, I, I, I don't know. It's, yeah, it's, um, Connor, Connor Prunty was also out the other yeah. day, so they, they were definitely down a few players. Earl Daly played fullback. Yeah. God, the options they've developed are uh, looking very serious. But Jamie Barron, I believe, he's the one that's kind of in a real race against time to be right for the summer. Hmm. But I suppose they, they definitely have developed a serious panel at this stage. Uh, is there anything else you want to talk about in terms of the, the Tipperary team? I mean, Jake Morris will certainly come back into that team. We have a question here from CK Streaming saying, would you start Noam McGrath and possibly give him a free role to roam? No better player to pick out players in space and giving a free role capable of scoring a five or six uh, from play a game. Like, I mean, the end of the 2020 championship, when you could see that Physically, he was running on empty. Yeah. He still scored four points from play against Galway that day. But um, would would you be, like you've in the past talked about, maybe he'd be almost a sweeper type role. Mm. But if you were going to give him that role, where would you where would you do it? Or, or where would you play him in the first place? Yeah, I, look, I thought, I thought he was, um, I, don't, I thought he was decent now at centre forward now the last day. I just thought he, particularly in the first half, I just thought he ran, I, while Kyo got two, two, two in the first half and he set up the three goals, I just thought, Noel McGrath's presence around the 40 and back into midfield. Anytime he got in the ball, you just thought there was a calmness and that everybody around him sort of relaxed a small bit. And he you knew he was going to do the right thing with the ball. Like so, um like the thing with Noel is do you go with him for 50 minutes, but then maybe lose his 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 guile and his smarts for the last 20, or do you hold him and start him? Bring him on ten minutes into the second half when other lads I we're getting to tire, like it's like you say, look, you, you get as much out of him, then you take him off. But like I think you can't beat those the match all these championship matches are going to be won the last 15, 20 minutes and they're starting like so it's yeah, um, it's a fair point because you, yeah. you might just want someone who's got unbelievable endless energy for the first fifteen yeah. minutes and then tell you know whoever was marking that guy, yeah. by the way, now you're marking you know the Thomas Muller of hurling, the lad who likes to, you know, the space and yeah. float around. And, and I think he, I, look, I think he's going to start. Was like I just think he's too good not to like. But um, that's not to say maybe certain games, maybe maybe the Limerick game and route round three, you could say okay, we want a, maybe an energetic guy in to start. But and if we're if Tipper is still in the contest early in the second half, you bring a lad like this on. I mean, it's it's. I suppose we probably don't have the depth, maybe, of terms of options off the bench, maybe not to start, maybe more at the moment. Like, so I would have thought maybe eleven is probably the spot for him at this stage. Yeah, the crowd and was given, definitely I, happy to see Patrick Bonner Maher back on the field, your own club man. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was great to see him back, and um, 
like he got a great cheer when he was announced at half time and like every time he got on the ball or was near the ball you just that uh, bit of an extra bit of a roar from the crowd came up and it, it, i just thought it was very funny like the, the the criticism of bonner over the years is that um his weaknesses in his shooting and he, he maybe he he doesn't maybe take on enough shots and maybe he passes off the ball enough first the last day Nearly every time he got a, shy, a sight of goal, he was having a shot, and they were all probably poor efforts or uh, not great. Like, but um, he he reminded me just he reminded me of a young lad coming back in for the first time and looking to impress and maybe not taking the right option. But look, you know, well, like, uh, he probably felt he had to prove something to a new manager. And look, I I think a guy like that coming on, I think he will definitely be a guy. 45 50 minutes into a big championship game that's going to be strong sprung from the bench because um he's um he just will bring that he will bring that bit of physicality and energy in the second half when maybe the 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 starters maybe are beginning to die off he probably won't score an awful lot but he might just win those a few dirty balls and lay off a few passes for get those easy points if you know what i mean and i think that's maybe the last two years tip are working slightly harder for the scores they're getting. Maybe they didn't. Maybe the likes of Limerick and Cork have been. Actually, now that you mention Limerick, they beat awfully four twenty nine to seventeen points in what was a de facto league uh, semi final mm. of a relegation in the league. Now, no one expected Limerick yeah. to not win that game. The twelve different scores. Graham Mulcahy got his first start of the year. I think he scored four. Oshin O'Reilly started, bagged, bagged himself a goal. Mike Casey was back. He played the guts of an hour. Uh, Pat Ryan got a nice goal late on. Uh, Barry Nash with a brilliant goal where he's, uh, he he burst up the field, hand pass mm. went behind him, flicked it behind himself and doubled it into the net brilliantly. Did you see it? Um, I, I doubt you've seen the full game. It was only highlights I suppose mm. we're all relying on. But is that enough to suggest that you know Limerick have blown out some of the dirty petrol? I think so. Look, I I, I was I never bought into this um, bit of a drama that uh, Limerick are vulnerable this year. I just think they're a, they're a squad now into their fifth if not sixth year of a cycle and I mean, you're getting to five you're, you're five and six with pretty much the same group of players um at first 15 fifth 16 17 you can't you can't go hard in the league and expect to have something left in the tank in the championship i think i think i think limerick are doing exactly what they did last year slow and steady early on build and build and build you i i did remark last year when they beat cork in a monster semi-final i thought they were poor enough but you could see after that, every game after that, they got better and better and better. I think Limerick are, they're they're going to be, I think they'll they'll hit the ground running because they have to, because Cork and Waterford are, on paper, they're probably their two toughest games in the Munster Championship are coming in the space of six days right at the start, where if you can hit the round running there, maybe get two wins, you can afford maybe to taper off a bit then and then come back up again for an all earning quarter semi and final. So um, I, I, I'd have no... Not that I'm saying Limerick are going to be Cork the first round of the championship. I, I'd have no worries that Limerick won't come, won't perform that day. That whether the win is another thing. Yeah, actually, a, a word on Antrim scene is where you know they're managed yeah. by Darren Gleeson, Tipperary man. Uh, they did make some changes. They changed the goalkeeper. They uh, they like of Neil McManus wasn't togged. Other other players like Jared Walsh, he he wasn't started. Uh, Donald Nugent came on and scored a goal. Uh, Keelan Malloy scored five points, for, you know, mm. here and up midfield. So that would be a concern for Tipperary that that a player can do that in the space of mm. one half. But um, any any word on them and what Darren Gleeson is doing? Is he just thinking bigger fish to fry and we'll take this hammering? Yeah, I think so. Like I, I when we went over to the the to the dressing rooms after last Sunday, was that we there was there were no official interviews because of the 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 GPA stance. But even when Darren was sort of chatting to us in terms of i can't talk lads he was very relaxed as if it was i wouldn't say the game didn't matter but i i think he knew and i think he, that look and i, th- I think awfully were the same like they were on a hiding to nothing both teams last weekend but they did uh, definitely antrim knew and awfully knew bear a complete freak result that they weren't going to beat limerick like so why would you put all your energy into those games when next saturday and navin is the big game and um Look, it's it's huge. I think it's the biggest game of the year for both. It was like, if you win, you're guaranteed to be in Division One again next year. Like, and you're five, guaranteed five games. And like as I said two weeks ago on, on the show, like it's a big year for Antrim. Like if if they find themselves in Division Two at the after the end of this year in Division Two and still in the McDonough Cup, 
any of the progress of the last few years might just taper off. Lads might not commit next year. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what happens next year. I think I think Antrim will be favourites, but we've seen over the last twelve months when Antrim have been favourites and a small bit of expectation on them. That's when they that's when they've fallen down and um, probably a little less pressure on Offaly, which makes them very very dangerous. Um, look, I'd like personally, I'd love to see Antrim stay up because I've like. I think one. I have never been to a Tipperary game in Antrim, and I could tip if Antrim stay up. Tip getting away a game in Antrim next year. I think a lot of Tip fans probably have never ticked off Antrim on their bucket list. So that that's that's my selfish motive anyway. But I, I think it's um, I think it's a very very tight one to call. I Antrim are favourites, but you'd be you, you worry about them with the favourites tag. Yeah, uh, between them they lost their games at the weekend by fifty four points. Yeah. I mean. Neither of them will be going in on the top of the ground, and obviously Antrim mm. quite frustrated losing that game to Leash yeah. the week before or the round before. How do you see Cork and Kilkenny going this weekend? Like Cork won one thirty seven to one thirty two after extra time in the All Ireland mm. semi final last year, would look like a team that should have won that game. Well, they were six up late on in normal time before that that good comeback from the Cats, but um, like Kilkenny do look like they're after finding new players this year. They and I'd include the likes of Mikey Butler there, David Blanchfield. Mm. Um, but they've also redeployed some of the older players. So Wally Walsh, he looks like he's a little bit reinvigorated. Killian Buckley is more or less in the half forward line, but Roman mm. from there. And then Parik Walsh, who funny, like, believe it or not, he's actually 30 now, yeah. but he's still such a, a vibrant player. He's gone up to the half forward line and he's their second top scorer, even though he's only played four or five league games with 15 points. Yeah, no, <laughs> they're, they're they're unreal, Kilkenny. Um, I, I, I know it was something that came into my mind, and I've actually heard a few people saying it since that after the, the tip Kilkenny match in the league, you would have said that Kilkenny would be the the one of the, the four, it's so called four in Leinster that wouldn't get through. You said they were so poor that day, but look, yeah. <laughs> they've kicked on since. Um, I don't think even if they lose to Cork this weekend, you'd say it's been a bad league for them. Look, they said they found players, Keane Kenny in the middle of the field, excellent. David Blanchfield, very, very good at wing back. Um, like Paddy Deegan's probably going to be their six. Like, you know, they're, I think Cody has, I think it's been a clever move. Cody will always get six very, very solid guys to play in defence. Because, like, he, and he, he, Kilkenny will always play a good defence. Kilkenny's struggles probably were. Up in the forwards, where there was probably too much pressure on TJ Reid. Now, look, if TJ comes back, and there's no guarantee he will. Like, uh, there's rumours that the, he was carrying a groin problem through mm. the club championship, and and an operation, maybe, and, and an operation. Like, if you're trying to clear that up, there's nothing worse than a groin strain, and they're niggly old things. You, they're very hard to shake off. Um, but if you were forward line with him, uh, Owen Cody, um, Walter Walsh, a reinvigorated Walter Walsh, uh, Parig Walsh. Maybe get Killian Buckley to do that floating hat midfielder role. Maybe like he's still he's only twenty nine or thirty two. He's not that old yeah. either. Like so, um, look, they have had a very very good league. I I mean, interesting to see how they cope with Cork speed and pace this weekend. Like, and I, I'd be expecting fifteen twenty thousand people in Park Like, there'll probably be a really good atmosphere down there on Saturday night. Like so, because um, I think Cork will go all out for this too. Um, um, but I think the two semi-finals are like, fortunate that they're two they're cross provincial line where there'll be no holding back in this. There's no shadow boxing if it was Kilkenny against Wexford or Cork against Waterford. We're probably gonna there's no there's very little risk in playing Cork playing Kilkenny this weekend. So um uh I'd fancy Cork. Well, maybe I'm naive and <laughs> Kilkenny will win. I, I, I'm not I haven't bought in completely into this new Cork this year. I think I I will have a better feel for Cork if they survive. Like if you survive with Kilkenny Test, you're. I think you're better set up. Um, uh, I think well, I'll have a better feel for Cork after this weekend if they beat Kilkenny. Because you know, if you beat Kilkenny and a good Kilkenny team, you're 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 on the right road. You know, why sometimes uh, counties target certain league games. They mightn't yeah. take the league all that seriously, but they'll target certain league games. Yeah, I would have said last year. Cork were looking to get something out of that Limerick game in the league and they got annihilated, you know, Lim yeah. Limerick pulverised them. Then this year, and, you know, that was a portent of things to come then yeah. in the championship when they got annihilated in the All-Ireland. But then this year, they targeted that that game against Limerick in the Gaelic grounds and they won by mm. nine points and they were dominant, pretty dominant. They ran up the centre of Limerick. 
they um the, both both teams got red cards very physical game hmm. and i wonder though like if you contrast the two games against limerick last year limerick created close to 60 chances in each game hmm. they created less than 30 in that yeah. game so to me that's one of the reasons that i'm buying into cork this year now that might have little bearing on this game but kilkenny like you talked about their defense they've only conceded one goal in their last four games like so they conceded three hmm. to Antrim the first day out one which was a, a goalkeeping mistake against Tipperary which it wasn't a created chance so they're actually unbelievably tight at the back I'd see Cork winning this game but probably hmm. just a puck of a ball in it then Waterford against um, we- Wexford is a clash of the Tipperary managers uh, this is that this is why I think Cahill will go strong I, I, I Cahill He's full focus on Waterford now, but there's not. You can't tell me that to the back of his mind, he's not a little bit worried, maybe, of Darry Egan. Like if you're if you're thinking of being future tip managers, these two are probably one and two in the pecking order now at this stage. And mm. um, but you can't tell me that. Oh, Jesus! If if, Wex, if Waterford if Wexford win this Sunday, that's that's another peg in and feather in and Darren and Darry Egan's cap. And I know. You're not. You're probably looking at two, three, four years down the line before maybe there's another tip vacancy comes around. But I just, I do think maybe the. If I was to, I not, won't be at the game. I, I, if I was, it's definitely the game of the two I'm more interested in this weekend. I just think um, from that, I just think the Tipperary element to this will be a, a, a nice bit of a sideshow. Yeah, but probably only to people like us. I'd yeah, say the rest of the country w- w- couldn't care a job. Um, how do you see it going? Waterford last won it in 2015. Parag mm. Mahoney was top scorer in that league, actually, alongside mm. um, Patrick Horgan. Um, Wexford last won it in 1973. Yeah. And believe it or not, longtime Cork uh, administrator Frank Murphy was the referee mm. that day. Yeah, I um, I don't. God, it's a hard one to call, isn't it? Like isn't Wexford, it? Yeah. five from five, very, very good. Waterford. Probably over the last couple of games, even in the win against Tip, now didn't put out. They they sort of mixed and matched. I think they'll injury permitting they'll go back to. I think we'll have Stephen Bennett will be back. I think Prunty will be back. Um, I think Des, I think you probably get Desi Hutchinson another start again this weekend. Just I suppose to get lads um, in, just been a bit more of a sink for Parag Mahoney. Like just to get maybe if he's perceived maybe best fifteen and a bit of. Uh, Get a bit of a balance there. I probably, I probably nudge towards Waterford just because because they're further along in their development. But that's not to say just the Wexford momentum won't carry them through. Um, like they've been very, very good. And look, they arguably have the the player of the league in, in Rory O'Connor so far. And look, I've said it from the very start. I think there was going to be a liberation in Wexford this year, and I just think. Particularly among their forwards, like their Dar Egan was going to be more forward orientated, and like they had, I say they had Rory O'Connor and Lit- um, McDonald, like two of the best forwards in the country. Who I wouldn't say prevented from doing their best work, but they, they, they weren't allowed to show their true ability over the last few years, just in the way the, the system of play that that Wexford had with with um, with Davy Fitz. I just think there's definitely more of a forward orientated being and playing to the strengths of the likes of those two. Yeah, it'll be a brilliant game to watch. We'll talk about the Tipperary footballers now. They had a 2-16 yeah. to 11 points win over Carlo at the weekend. It's four wins on the spin. Kevin Fahey uh, got a late burst of 1-1 to crown the performance. Mikey O'Shea had scored a goal earlier in the second half. Carlo also had a man sent off late on. So we know that Tipperary still have promotion in their own hands. And this weekend we'll play London knowing a win will secure promotion to Division 3. So it's, yeah. it's starting to look very good. Yeah, it's 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 some turnaround from um the the first two games, like the poor performance in the draw with Watford and a, a, an equally poor performance in the last the home last to Leitrim. You said, "Geez, they, they they were really struggling. Like they didn't look like they were going anywhere." But like it's it's remarkable. I just think from people who don't see them that often, like the level of performance from the first two to the last four games has been completely different, and like they're way more forward oriented and more more intensity to what they're doing and like you you were there on Sunday like the, the tip kicked nine points from play in the first 20 minutes and they were all fabulous scores like really mm. like oh, Connor Sweeney two shots off the shoulder like they 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 were there was understanding of what they're doing like they were making clever runs like Connor was making a run out to win and if he got the ball 
and he was on his left, he was having a shot. Or he was there weren't stupid shots, but like they were well created. Um lost their way in the last 15 minutes of the first half, allowed Carlo back into it. But I thought the big thing for me was when Connor Sweeney went off. Um you said okay that the, the big the leader of the attack was gone, but no second half, like they were just as good. And the, the like Mikey O'Shea and Sean O'Connor, really, really lively players in the full forward line. And Jack Kennedy was very, very good. Mark Russell in the middle of the field, like <laughs> we said to you, who does he think he is? Uh, Dave, uh, uh, Fence, Brian Fenton, like going up scoring these three points and then winning the penalty and making these long bursts and runs through the middle, like so. Um, look, it's um. It's been a brilliant turnaround, but God, you just hope they don't mess it up from here. Like it's, it's, um, it's a huge banana squin of a game this weekend. You think like Carlo or London won their first three matches, lost narrowly to Cavan last weekend by a pint. Okay, they're out of the running, but you probably have a panel of London players coming over and probably never played in Semple Stadium before. They're going to be motivated for that experience alone. Like, and so you know they're going to be, they're going to be up for this game. So if, if Tipperary are not fully focused on the task in hand and maybe are not weighed down by the... And there will be a bit of pressure because they're expected to win and um, because if they lose, like it's, it's all over effectively. Like So um, you just I just think the first 20 minutes will be so important because if, if this gets into a dogfight in the middle of the second half, it could, be a, it could be a very, very nervy evening. And you know when Tipperary missed that penalty through Sean O'Connor and then Michael O'Reilly, the goalkeeper, put the 45 yeah. wide, you thought maybe the team could fade away a little bit, but no, they, they kind of, I think mm. they kept Carlos to just two po- two more points for the remainder yeah. of the game. Like said, Martin Kyo and Teddy Doyle, they, they got the scores laid on. So you would actually go into the, irrespective of what happens this weekend, now it would be a huge blow if Tip didn't get promoted. Mm. There's just so much more positivity than yeah. there was at the start of the year when you were losing games, drawing games, and all these players were no longer part of the panel. Oh, definitely so. Like, and like, just, you have, like there's such a massive opportunity. Look, oh yeah, okay, if you win on Saturday, you're up to Division Three next year. And I think between the bottom end of Division Two and the top four or five in Division Four, there's very, very little between those teams. On their day, I think I think Tipperary on their day would be as good as down Cork and Offaly in the bottom end of Division Two. Like and I didn't throw in Clare in terms of that. So like I so you're up to Division Three, you're in a better standard of football, you're going to play Cavan in the Division 4 final in Crow Park. That's another very, very good game to get before Championship. You're away to Waterford in the first round of the Championship. A game you're, you'll be expected to win, even though it's, it's undone Garvin, but they'll be forewarned after what happened if you in the first round of the league. Then you're playing Clare or Limerick in the Munster semi. Like, like There's a route there for Tip to get to a Munster final, and if they do that, they're in the, they're in the All-Ireland series. Oh, well, even though I think maybe a Charlton Cup campaign maybe long term would be better for Tipperary because there's probably a better chance of winning silverware but that's not to say getting to a Munster final and getting to the last 16 of the All-Ireland wouldn't be a very very good year for Tip as well and do you think any players would scarper you know for the summer if it was a Charlton Cup ahead because all the talk when people refer to the Charlton Cup they're like Oh, you don't want to get sucked mm. down into the Charleston yeah. Cup. It's, there's just always negative connotations. Uh, I don't think so. Um, as I think the only, I think the only way you, I think the only time Tip will know they're in the Charleston Cup realistically is if they get to a Munster semi final and lose. So like you're, but so you're already, and that's probably into the middle to May. So like if you're a senior panelist, you're already well invested at that stage. I, I think I'm not sure whether the the J1s or the, the, the permits to America would be would it be too late for those at that stage if lads wanted to scarper off before um they come back for the club championship. So um it's um it's a I, I think it I just I think it's if the, the whole year really could open up for tip after this weekend if they win. And I, I I think they will. I just think I don't think they'll get bogged down by pressure. Um hopefully like it the word on Connor Sweeney it was a, a calf strain he picked up against Carlo. You probably think six days is is too much of a risk. If you started him again and it broke down, you're it's it's a big problem. But then look, if you start him, look, he, he doesn't have to play in the League Four final, and you're not playing Waterford. I think till the end of April, so there is time. So that they might they might just well risk him, um, just because of the importance of the match. Like, um, so hopefully they'll they'll get the job done. It'll be to be. 
to be a very very good turnaround and just like it's um i think it's great credit to every one of them because like the like tip really could have found themselves in a bad place after the um after that uh after the bad start they had to the campaign mm, absolutely keep the comments flying in there we're going to talk now about the tipperary camogie team and oh, it was a tough one for bill milani <laughs> and code they were they were in a good spot against galway and ultimately lost by 111 to 13 points there was obviously that free at the end where um i suppose tipperary can feel massively aggrieved yeah. that it was called for charging now i can see i mean End of the 2014 All Ireland final, Brian Hogan yes. comes out, and it was a similar sort of a scenario. It's very anyway. same. You know, it, it really was quite similar. Uh, yeah. So um, we're talking, I'll, I'll bring it up on screen here, actually, in a second. Yeah, I just showed you the, the clip. It, it, um, it did. That was the that was the thing that came into my head. Like, and we would have all oh, come back to 2014 that Brian Hogan, that he was probably hard done by. I would have thought there was no free there either, that it was just really a collision, really. Parry Mar stood his ground. It wasn't really a barge, or it wasn't really a foul by the defender, and I, I think that's the very same here because um, it's um, you see Claire Hogan, she, I, 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 like she really turned, like she, I can't really say she was barging, like because like she, she like. I, 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 what your you thoughts? See how the referee might interpret yeah. it that way, though. She does go straight. Yeah, yeah. me thinking it might actually be a free. Yeah, it's like I, I. I I, I can't remember that he actually booked the player. It seemed as a rule in Camogie that that's actually a yellow card. And I, I saw it happen to Claudia McIntyre three years ago, twice in All Ireland semi final. She was sent off, and her two yellow card offences were for going on a solo run and running into the opposition defender. Like that, that, that's a draconian rule of Camogie where a barge is actually a yellow card offence, which is crazy. Like, so it should be, if you want to give a barge, fine, but it should be a fucking booking. Like, so unless you're doing it all the time, where whether you're a danger to the opponent. Um, I just thought, under the rules of Camogie, that is a free to Galway. I just thought, like, to lose the game in that scenario is just... And what about the red card uh, early on? So, yeah. like, I'll just could tell you what Milani said afterwards. Mm -hmm. He said, uh, I'm not happy at all. Why would I be? Some of the refereeing decisions were scandalous. Down to 14, two people pulling on the ball, and one of our girls gets sent off. I know it's hard for refs, but some of the decisions were incredulous. Two people going for the ball at the end, and a free goes against us. Are you joking me? Yeah, yeah, I, I, I can see about the last free because, like, you get in some ways it was merely more of a collision. Like she clear, she got the ball and she started to look up, and nearly the the Dublin the Galway defender was nearly in front of her before she even realised it. So, like, me and you would actually know barging where you sort of make it you make a deliberate attempt to try and get the defender out of the way there's Claire Hogan there I don't think she even knew that the Galway defender was that close to her when she'd got the ball in her hand so that's why I thought that was a little harsh and then the red card initially I thought it was very harsh it was the first view and I saw is that um Aoife Dunahoo and Casey Hennessy there was a ball floating Aoife went with 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 the hand uh, Claire or Casey went with the hurl and she flicked the ball away and she probably did catch um, Aoife on the fingers but the ball was there and she flicked it away and Aoife don't know who reacted by pushing her away and I said to myself God is is he after sending her off for striking i.e. striking her on the hand when the ball was there to be flicked away but I did see a subsequent um, clip from the other side of the field which showed that after Aoife Aoife Dunner, who reacted and pushed Casey Hennessy away, Casey Hennessy flicked back with the hurley. And I don't think she connected with Aoife Dunahu, but it didn't look good. Like the like we saw in Sam and Hurling, if you there's, there's a strike in it and the intention to strike is also when when she flung back with the curly in response to Aoife Dunahu, that it gave the referee or the, the decision to make. And like anytime if you give a referee a decision to make, you're you're asking for trouble. And look, in some ways it was probably harsh, but look, in, when, when I saw the following up in the clip, I said to myself, the referee probably got it right and it's probably going to be a harsh lesson for Casey to learn going forward because I would have thought 15 on 15 tip would have won that game. Like they yeah. were, like to be to be at, against the, the best team in the country in Galway who had to bring the McGrath sisters off the bench to win that game with four, with, with an extra player. Like so, like, um, so look, Frustrating, like what's the one thing we've been saying early on Tipcast as we started this talking Tip Camogie? They're so close, and every time they're up against the big tree, they always feel to seem like 
losing narrowly. I just, I just, I can't wait for the day they're going to win a big game against one of the big three because the, the, a group of players are not going to deserve it more. Uh, I'd just be hoping that there's sort of a cause within the panel now yeah. that we're going to get over the line. We pushed the All Ireland champions this hard. We were down to 14 players for 50 minutes and it somehow helps drive them over the line and kind of, um, yeah. I don't know, just fuels them that bit more. Um, Paul Tierney says um, experience probably won out for Galway milk and freeze hard loss but the team are going places yeah. can, you, can you tell us then about the, the minor team the, the Tipperary Miners who had a, again narrow defeat this time to Cork yeah I guess you t- at the end of last week you were said to, um, when uh, Ursuline and, and presentation Turles bought one All-Ireland school final you think god this is going to be a great weekend and then the seniors lose and miss out in the league final by a point, and then the minors lose and all are a minor semi final by a point. Just <laughs> just shows you, um, look, in top level sport is cruel, but look, it, it it's the results at the end of the day. But there's no doubt, tip at at all levels, Camogie are as good, if not are as good as the other the big three, as we know them. I mean, it's just it's a, just about getting the the results now, and um, look, um. I, I would have no doubt as a lot of those minors are going to go on over the next few years to play at senior level and we'll get their own back on Cork. It's just um, reading Thomas Conway's report in the paper, it was uh, 179 points, very low scoring game, but that doesn't tell the story. He said this was an unbelievable game. It was just, if you get a game like that, you know, well, it's full-blooded committed. There's no space and it was just a, merely the fact that Cork were a pint up when time ran out really if it went on another five minutes tip might have got a pint or two to nudge back in front it was it was that just that tight and just tip tip didn't couldn't have done much more to win that game it was just a tight game that they were just narrowly on the wrong side of okay i think we pretty much have everything covered for this week shane any any final thoughts heading into this weekend for um, the tip footballers, I suppose. yeah sure hopefully they, they win that get through it I suppose that'd be the big thing for this week and I suppose just to mention that I don't know if you saw the draws last night North Championship we're, we're back on again I think it's uh, Boris Lee and Tube in the first round like sure sell Same tickets for that so and a killer one against Killer Dangan so like you can't it gets, it's great the old draws it's, uh, the league started this weekend and last weekend and the weather's looking good so uh, yeah. the, the exciting year ahead yeah absolutely and don't forget to pick up a copy of the Nina Guardian that's available now thanks very much Shane Yeah, cheers, talk to you again.